Okay, hello everybody. All right, we're gonna get started now. Um, let's see, all right. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Johnson with VoIP Supply and thank you for taking the time to join us in today's webinar. We are joined by our partner at Grandstream, Chris Dow, who's gonna be uh, diving into integrating uh, UC and networking solutions here. So just wanted to point out, you know, we'd like to uh, ask if you could please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we're going to be monitoring the chat along the way and we'll answer questions along the way if we can and definitely at the end as well. We just wanted to give you a little bit of uh, information on who uh, VoIP Supply is. So um, just so you are aware, our product catalog is really extensive and we really have an amazing team behind us. Um, our VoIP experts have over 50 years of experience. Um, not only do we just have a website, you know, we really are um, a team who is here to help you guys out with anything VoIP related. <laughs> and when you partner with VoIP Supply, uh, you know, we're really, we're not just here to sell you hardware, uh, but to really provide support and options for you. Um, we offer wholesale pricing and financing options, uh, marketing materials and sales support, and uh, we're really here to uh, help you out as best we possibly can. So VoIP Supply also offers uh, fulfillment and provisioning services. Uh, we offer custom built portals, API, um, provisioning and blind shipping services as well. And lastly, uh, we do want to let you know about our reclaim and refresh programs. Uh, we can buy back your equipment and it's a great tool for your customers who are maybe swapping out their legacy phone systems and whatnot. And you can get a ton of more information on this on our website. If you have any questions, we're here to help you out. So other than that, um, I'm going to turn it on over to Chris now. And just to let you guys know, uh, Today's slides and the recording will be sent out to all the attendees too at the end, but we appreciate you sticking with us and we'll get going. Thank you, Rebecca. Sure. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, or morning if you're still on the West Coast. Like Rebecca said, my name is Chris Stow. I am our regional sales manager for North America, so handling the U.S. and Canada. And today we'll be talking about really are you seeing networking and how all of that can uh, create a complete solution and, and a standardized solution for uh, for you at your customer sites? Uh, so, as Rebecca alluded to at the beginning, if anyone has any questions, feel free to pop those over in the chat or use the Q and A box. Uh, I have a couple people in the background. Hopefully to answer some of the questions. If not, we can get to those at the end. So real quick, today's agenda, like I said, uh, give you a quick introduction to Grandstream for those of you that don't know who we are. Uh, touch on how to integrate the Wi-Fi and UC to create a complete solution. And then at the end, give you a uh, couple nuggets as far as our product roadmap goes and what that looks like for later this year. First of all, who, who is Grandstream? So this is our 21st anniversary. I believe the exact same as VoIP Supply, if I remember correctly. Uh, we are the same age. So the company founded in 2002. Uh, we are a US-based company uh, based out of Boston, Massachusetts. That's where our corporate office is have two more offices here in the U.S., in Dallas and Los Angeles, and as well as some regional offices throughout the world, as you can see here. Uh, Grandstream is used and sold in 150 different countries. That's, uh, that's where our products went last year. Uh, and then we are the largest manufacturer of ATAs. Uh, it was actually Grandstream's first device was our one, excuse me, one port um, ATA, which is now the HT801. And we are the second largest manufacturer of IP phones and IP video phones, according to Frost and Sullivan. Our mission here at Grandstream is we believe in connecting the world. 
Uh, so you'll really see that throughout all of our products, um, how they integrate seamlessly, not only with each other, but also third party products as all of our stuff is open SIP as well. We offer total solutions. Our goal is to be a one-stop shop for all of your VoIP, UC, and networking needs. Uh, I know and understand how a lot of the managed service providers and, and resellers and uh, ITSPs out there love their standardization. It's easy. You don't have to vendor manage multiple, um, multiple vendors. That's why we really make everything. So today we'll kind of focus on the networking and telephony side. Uh, but as I mentioned, analog devices is how we got started and also dabble in access control, facility management, and conferencing. All of our solutions that you'll see here today, uh, none of them have any licensing fees. That's one of the things Grandstream does different compared to some of the other vendors out there. That includes all of our device management platforms, 100% free, no, no, license free uh, no license fee whatsoever. Uh, we want to offer the flexibility. That's why all of our products are open source. Uh, they're not proprietary or locked down to our specific platform. They'll pretty much work with, uh, with any of them out there. And we do interop with a lot. Uh, and we also offer Android capable devices, especially on the video, <clears throat> excuse me, the video phone side. So a quick look at the product portfolio. Um, here's a few pictures of kind of what we have going on in every category. So again, we're gonna to focus today mainly on the IP voice as well as the networking stuff. But as you can see, it's a lot larger uh, portfolio than, than just those two categories. So like I mentioned, if you have heard of Grandstream, it's probably on the unified communication side. What a lot of people don't know and what we'll start with today is actually the networking side of the equation. And then we'll get into the UC and how all of that can, uh, can collaborate to make one solution. So our networking solution part of our portfolio is actually our fastest growing product line here at Grandstream. It's like that not only here in the US, but globally. Uh, so we have a full portfolio of APs. I'll highlight all of those here in a second, as well as three different management options, flavors, if you will, depending upon what you're looking for. But first, why should I use Grandstream uh, networking solutions or GWN series versus some of the other stuff you might already be using? Uh, I would say the biggest thing, um, well, really the second biggest thing, the, the first biggest thing is one, we have stock, which is available now. I know other vendors have slowly been, been getting their chipset shortages and everything in line, uh, but we do have stock and availability. But the second big thing, and I've touched on it a couple times already, is the management options. So we have a few different options, which I'll touch on on the next slide, but it's all free. We don't charge for our cloud management software. Uh, it's, it's all included. Uh, we also have three-year warranty on all of our networking gear, as well as advanced features. On the management side, before we talk specific products, here are what those management options look like for the networking series in particular. All of our access points, um, with the exception of one model, have a embedded controller. So you can select the uh, an AP to be the master and control the, uh, the deployment locally from that master AP. We also have two different flavors of GWN.cloud. We have GWN.cloud, which is the cloud offering and the GWN manager, which is the, uh, the on-premise uh, software-based deployment. Both are free to use, it really depends on if you want to use the cloud option or in some cases, uh, some deployments will have to do the local server option. See that in uh, government type deployments sometimes or medical. Uh, but do have a couple different flavors there. They're essentially the same thing. Uh, it's just a matter of if you want to go proud versus local server deployment. 
With our GWN series, here is our full list of all of our indoor access points. Um, all of the circular ones are going to be your wall or ceiling mount, normal indoor access points, I guess you could say. We have a couple niche options as well. The GWN 7602 there in the top left was designed for hotel deployments. Those can mount under the, uh, the table in a hotel room, if you will. Uh, has a couple different PoE options where you could use to, uh, you know, power the smart TV or, or stuff like that. Uh, and then we have a couple end wall options as well. The 7624 there up top and the 7661. And I'll touch on those uh, in a minute. The top row is our Wi-Fi 5 offering of the portfolio. And then the bottom is our current Wi-Fi 6 offering if you wanted to go the Wi-Fi 6 route. And that's what we'll focus on today. With the GWN 7660, this is our 2x2 two two indoor access point. So it's going to be similar to like a U6 Lite or an EAP610 if you're using Ubiquity or TP-Link. If you're looking for the comparison from one of our Wi-Fi 5 models, this would be the Wi-Fi 6 version of the 7605. Uh, but 2x2, two two, this will give you a wireless throughput of 1.7 gigs and a coverage range of up to 175 meters. And then the next one is our 4x4, four four, which is a little bit bigger of an access point. I'd say it's an inch or two larger in uh, circumference. Uh, but this is our 4x4, four four. so it's going to have more aggregate wireless throughput, bigger engine in it, if you will. This will support up to 750 concurrent clients and give you a little bit better coverage range of up to 175 meters. With the GWN7661, this is one of those niche ones I was talking about. So this would be our in-wall Wi-Fi 6 access point. This would go over the cable drop or uh, CAT6 cat drop in the wall, if you will. Uh, it is a 2x2 two two access point, so it's going to be similar as far as capabilities go to the 7660. Uh, this will support up to 500 concurrent Wi-Fi client devices with up to 100 meter range. And then you do have two gigabit ports to provide power to other devices. So if you wanted to deploy these in a hospitality type environment, you could use it to power the IPTV or the IP phone that might be in the room as well. And then finally, the last one of the Wi-Fi 6 category that we have is brand new, actually, just launched within the last couple of weeks. Uh, so this is the GWN7662, and it sits right between the 7660 and the 7664. So this is going to be a hybrid access point. So you get 4x4 four four technology on the 5 gigahertz band and 2x2 two on the 2.4 gigahertz. So you get a little bit of both technologies, you get more four by four without having to pay for a full four by four. So it is gonna be a little bit cheaper than what you get with the 7664. Now on the outdoor access point side, this is our current lineup. The two on the left are the Wi-Fi 5 versions, two on the right are the Wi-Fi 6. So, these are essentially cousins, if you will, to the indoor side. So we have the 7660 LR, meaning long range. This is our two by two outdoor access point. The only difference is you do get a little bit better coverage range given these are long range. So you get the two detachable antennas here on the two by two. And then on the 7664 LR, this is a 4x4, four four, you get the four detachable antennas that you can remove. Now jumping in real quick to our router, current router lineup, I guess I should say. Uh, this is our 7062 and then 7052 and 52F. So Wi-Fi 6 dual band router and a Wi-Fi 5 router. Here are some of the highlights with some of the 
quick comparisons. Uh, so the Wi-Fi 6 one is gonna be a little bit more powerful. It'll support more concurrent clients. It's a little bit faster throughput from a gigabit speed standpoint. Uh, important to note that both are all cloud provision and management um, capabilities. So you can't put these in GWN.cloud and manage these routers remotely. And then it does come with the VPN mesh network, firewall features, uh, really the whole nine yards as far as that's concerned. I just want to highlight the 7062 real quick since this is our Wi-Fi 6 um, wireless router. We're seeing these deployed in small businesses, home offices, as well as service providers right now. Like I said, this will support up to 256 concurrent clients. This is a two by two router. Um, and then, as I mentioned, has the built-in VPN, supports mesh networking, uh, has the cloud provisioning and management ready to go with GWN.cloud, as well as being a dual WAN router. So you can configure that LAN 4 port to, um, to a WAN port to make this a dual band router as well. We get that question quite a bit. And now the last part of the networking portfolio are switches. So we launched our Layer 2 Plus managed switches uh, right at the beginning of the year, I guess I should say. Um, so here's kind of what the managed ones look like right now. We have six models, three with PoE, three without PoE, um, in eight, 16, or 24 gigaport flavors. And then being managed, these would all be managed through the embedded controller or through one of the GWN.cloud or GWN manager options. So as far as the portfolio goes, the way to tell if it's PoE or non-PoE is if a P is in the model number. So the 7801P will be the PoE model, the 7801 without the P will not have PoE. And then like I said, eight, 16 or 24 ports, depending upon what you need there. We do have the 48 port layer two switch coming out in the next month or so. Uh, so we will have a 48 port with PoE as well. And then a fairly new addition to the switch portfolio are our unmanaged network switches. So we launched these probably a month and a half, two months ago now. Uh, these are going to be real basic, real low cost as far as the switch goes. So we have five models right now. Three have PoE, two do not. We have them in five or eight gigabit ports with four or eight of those being PoE. Uh, and then just a couple basic features. We have LED indicators on each port to tell, you know, one, if it has power to what the link and activity and speed and all that is. Getting into the switches themselves, here are the ones that have been launched right now. So we have the 7700 and the 7701, which is our non-POE switches. Uh, real basic, plastic molding. Uh, don't want to say cheap, but that, that's what they are. You throw them in, $15 switch, uh, and they just work. And then we have the 7700P, 7701P, and 7701PA. These are going to be our PoE switches. Uh, so are nicer, have the metal casing. Uh, they are desktop and wall mountable. Uh, the last one being rack mountable. Uh, the, again, the P stands for PoE, and then the PA at the end. Not sure if this is what it stands for, but I refer to that as PoE on all, because all eight PoE or all eight gigabit ports will be PoE on that PA model. And then another new addition, um, talking about routers, uh, we finally have a GWN 7000 replacement for those of you that were deploying the old school 7000 routers. So these are our new business grade multi-WAN gigabit VPN routers. 
A uh, couple different options have the 7001, 2, and 3. Uh, they vary in ports, so 4, 6, or 9 WAN ports. Uh, WAN lands configurable on these. Has the built in VPN. Uh, again, these are gigabit routers, so these are gigabit, gigabit Ethernet ports. And then they vary in their PoE input and outputs. Here's a breakdown of what each one of those three look like. So you have everything from six gigabit WAN LAN ports up to nine. Uh, and then as you go up, you get more th um, VPN tunnels. The throughput remains the same, but you do get uh, more PoE output as you go up. Uh, and then as these can be embedded controllers, as you go up, they can actually control more local GWN APs if you wanted to go with the embedded controller route versus the cloud option route. So that's it on the networking side. Now we'll talk about how to integrate this with Wi-Fi and UC to, to really create a complete solution. So those of you who are probably very familiar with our GRP desktop phones. So we'll, we'll stray away from that for a minute. And the first thing I wanna to touch on is our cordless Wi-Fi phones. So we've had the WP810 and 820 out now for a few years, uh, which is hard to believe. Recently in the last nine months or so, released the 822 and 825 options to this cordless Wi-Fi series. With the 822, it's gonna be very, very similar to the WP820, for those of you that have been deploying the original model. Uh, the biggest difference I'll say is the 822 has a bigger battery. Uh, so with the 820, you had about a seven and a half hour talk time, 150 hour standby time. With this one, it's eight hours of talk time with 200 hours of standby. Uh, but similar as far as specs go, uh, two SIP accounts, two lines, integrated Bluetooth, push to talk, micro USB headset jack, whole nine yards. We've really seen these 822s take over and be a decked replacement to your deployments. So you can set these WPs up on the uh, network of your customer. You pop in the SSID, as long as you have fairly good networking, um, you know, these things just sit there and, and work on the network and you don't have to worry about base stations and repeaters and the whole nine yards as far as that goes. So that's really where we've seen these WPs deployed. And now transitioning to the WP825, this is going to be, again, similar specs to what we just talked about with the 822. The biggest difference with this 825 is this is our first ruggedized, waterproof, and drop safe cordless phone. Uh, it just happens to be Wi-Fi because uh, that's where that's where our investment is on the cordless side. So similar as far as put this on the network, you don't have to worry about base stations, repeaters. You can run this on the network, and as long as the networking's fairly solid, you you get pretty clear voice. Then the other thing I want to talk about is our fairly new conference phone. I feel like this launch was kind of quiet, uh, but this is our new conference phone. If you're used to or have seen the old one, it kind of looked like a hockey puck. So it's a big upgrade as far as that's concerned. Uh, this is dual band Wi-Fi 6, uh, so similar to the WP820. You can run this on the network on the customer side. Uh, to get uh, to get your voice that way. This is a built or has a built-in rechargeable battery. So you are able to charge this um, at a secondary site and then bring it to the middle of a conference room table if you wanted to do that. And then the big thing is this is running the newer version of Android, Android 10. I believe the old one was seven if, or it might've even been later than that. Uh, but again, has the omnidirectional mics that you'd expect in a phone like this, as well as advanced echo cancellation and microphone beam foaming technology. 
And then the last thing I want to talk about pertaining to Wi-Fi voice or integrating UC to your Wi-Fi is our new hotel phones. Uh, so this is the GHP 611, and we also have a GHP 611W. We have the same model of this, which is the 610 version, and it's a, uh, it's a white phone. So same phone, just color white instead of black. So this is gonna be real basic as far as the phone goes. Two lines, two SIP accounts. It's designed to be mounted on the, uh, you know, the, the bathroom wall in a hotel or, you know, just be a cheap phone on a hotel desk, so to speak. Uh, but the important thing is we do have a Wi-Fi flavor. So like the cordless phones that we talked about, like the conference phone we talked about, you can run this phone over the, uh, the network at your site, whether it be a hotel or a small business. Uh, also with these hotel phones, they are cloud manageable with our GDMS platform. So just like our GRPs, our GXPs, any of our endpoints really for that matter, you can manage these phones bulk through our GDMS platform. And then here is our GHP 621 and 621W. Again, have the same model in the 620 options, which would be the white version of this phone. Uh, but the W model has that built-in Wi-Fi as well. So just like the 611 series, you could run this over the network. Uh, just have a little bit more programmable keys. Uh, again, this is cloud manageable. The big thing with this one is that faceplate there on the right-hand side is swappable uh, so it comes with that black option there also comes with a clear one in the newer boxes you can customize those through our ghp faceplate customization tool and create uh, cardstock copies that you can print on your side or we also have a silk screen option if you're looking for something a little bit nicer uh, as well but again, have the option to deploy these on the Wi-Fi network. So since we're talking about hotels, what does kind of all of this look like? How does all of this integrate? So here's a quick diagram. You would have your uh, SIP service, whether that is analog trunks or SIP trunks, PRI, whatever that may be, going into your IP PBX. I used a Grandstream UCM in this case. Uh, it doesn't have to be, but uh, you'd have your IPPBX talking to your switch there. Um, your switch would then go out, control the all the endpoints on site, whether that would be the networking stuff or any of the phone options that I have down there at the bottom, whether it be the IP video phone at the front desk or security, uh, all the way to your guest rooms and um, facility access stuff. But then all of this connects to the network. So I have a couple grand stream access points there, which could provide network to the building. Uh, that switch provides power to not only the network, but those endpoints as well. So create a full end to end solution that we alluded to at the beginning. So that's our goal. Uh, again, we wanna offer standardization across the board. So no matter what you're looking at, um, you know, you have the ability to deploy some Grandstream or all Grandstream. Uh, you know, you just have that ability. And now finally, quick roadmap overview. Um, so we are getting very, very close to launching our layer three switches, uh, as well as our 48 port layer two switches that I uh, mentioned earlier here. Uh, probably looking at a month or two. Uh, we do have some Wi-Fi 6E access points on the roadmap for Q4 later this year. Uh, so we should have one or two of those added to the portfolio by the end of the year. We do have more unmanaged switches on the roadmap, um, you know, 16 and 24 port models, so a little bit bigger than what's already currently out there. And then uh, we are discussing and talking about more Wi-Fi 6 outdoor access points, uh, including some point-to-point -point stuff, which is also on the roadmap. So 
just to kind of give you a uh, an idea there. As far as our new networking product plan, I counted over the next 12 months, 40 of our new products will actually be on the networking side. So already mentioned, uh, we'll have some Wi-Fi uh, 6E stuff on the roadmap. Um, the wired and wireless VPN router and firewalls, some of those have already launched that you saw today, uh, have others on the roadmap. We are going to have some enterprise network switches. Uh, so it gets, you know, more on the enterprise side with uh, SFP modules. And then, as I mentioned, the uh, fixed wireless access category as well, which will probably be a little bit further down the down the line, but within the, within the next 18 months, I would say. So with that being said, that wraps up the presentation almost right at 30 minutes to give you... A little bit of your day back. Uh, so if anyone has any questions, I can uh, flip over if they haven't been answered already and and ask whether it be us or uh, Rebecca on the VoIP supply side. We'll stick around for a minute or two to get some stuff answered. Sounds good. And thank you everyone for joining today. We appreciate it. and. If you do think of anything, feel free to reach out to us. And it looks like Hugh has been answering some stuff, so. Yeah, looks like all the questions have been taken care of. So with that, we'll wrap up today's webinar. And if there's any outstanding questions that uh, you think of, feel free to uh, reach out to myself or your VoIP Supply Sales Rep, and we can get those squared away uh, after the webinar. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. All right. Have a good day.